Hi everybody, I'm Chris Watson and welcome to this edition of the NISPA Captain's Club presented by the New York State Correctional Officers and Police Benevolent Association. Today we're outside Troy High School in Section 2 to introduce you to the Troy High football team who this past season made history repeating as the Class AA state champs due in large part to their senior leaders, their coaches, and a community that has always supported this program. Third down and eight. A first down likely seals it for Troy. Fake to war, Germanario has Jesse Brown! It's a Troy first down! And the Flying Horses have just sealed a state title. Following the 2016 state championship, when it came to expectations going into the 2017 season, Bob Burns, head coach of the Troy High Flying Horses, knew what kind of team he would have. Mostly, because he knew he could trust the guys who were leading it onto the field. It's not ever a group where you have to worry about what you're gonna get on a Friday night because they're 15, 16, 17, 18 year old kids. The core group that I've had for three years, I know what I'm gonna get out of them. Yeah, we had special kids. This was a really, really easy team to root for. Um, I like this team a lot as far as that perspective is they're great kids. The whatever it takes approach, no problem coach, we got it. And we had a team like that and a coaching staff like that. That's where the special, unique bond, I think, gets hardened when you have guys who are willing to just say, whatever you need, coach, no problem. And that attitude has a lot to do with where they're from. Troy is a unique place, located just north of Albany on the Hudson River. Roughly 49,000 people call Troy home. I just think that the kids and the way we play football completely epitomizes this city. I mean, this city's built on you know, hard work and diversity. I mean, there's there's kids, and that's one of the nice things about this community is, you know, I have kids that live out in Wine and Skill that are, you know, upper middle class kids that, you know, parents do very well, make a really good living, and then I got kids that live, you know, inner city that, that you know, they struggle. And the fact that we were able to pull kids like that together and accomplish a common goal, I, I think that makes it even more special. It's something we take pride in, you know, we've built a brand, you know, Troy Tough. I feel it starts with football, you know, the school year starts with football and it kind of dictates how that year is going to go. So, you know, everyone's always big into it. You got a lot of guys who are on the football team, so a lot of people will be supporting them and, you know, it's just something we rally around. Troy High Football won state titles in 1996 and again in 1998. And they've always been a program that has been seen as the hometown team. We have a football community. It's just for some of the reasons some sports work in certain communities and they excel and here I think our community really really loves the sport so the nice thing for us is we have kids growing up in Troy who want to play for Troy High. In this community for what you know the type of people that live around here football is is the most important thing to them and when they see kids like that work hard and accomplish their goals it makes everybody in the community feel better. In 2017 the Flying Horses cruised through the regular season and even the section 2 playoffs ending with the championship. Sometimes it's tough to be the favorite. Yep, and Troy was that team all season long. They were the ones with the targets on their back, not only because they were the defending section and state champs, but because they had the most talent coming back in the double A's. Everybody knew if you were going to win the title, you were going to have to go through the flying horses. Week in, week out, they answered the bell. They had ups and downs, but a lot more ups than downs. And in this game tonight, they proved that they are still the team to beat. When it came time for the state tournament, they faced a familiar opponent, the Section 1 champs, the New Rochelle Huguenots, the same New Rochelle team that Troy had beaten in the state tournament the year before. You know, we knew going in this was going to be maybe the toughest team we play all year. So uh, we had just won a sectional title and we knew it was really, really time to get to work. We had got kind of the monkey off our back with the Section 2 title. So going into this, it was full preparation. We knew it was going to take our best game to beat them and uh, our execution was very well during the game. You know, guys were focused and just played uh, to their best ability. Troy got their toughest test of the season up to that point. New Rochelle went toe to toe with the defending state champs for 48 minutes. The dream of a repeat was in jeopardy. A perfect season slipping away. It was time for the seniors to leave their legacy. And boy, <laughs> talk about an opportunity. <laughs> 10 seconds ago in the state quarterfinals, you're the defending state champions. You're looking to shed yourself of a pesky and very talented foe in New Rochelle. And one way to do it is make the, ex make the uh, field goal to win, potentially win the game. Good hold. 
It's down and through. Troy takes the lead with seven seconds left. Plenty of height, no doubter on that one. Uh, I was pretty, I was pretty shocked at first. The fact that it came down to a game-winning field goal. If you told me last year that Michael Fazio was going to hit a game-winning field goal to put us through to uh, the state semifinals, I would have told you you're crazy. But you know, he came in and did it, and you know, uh, I think it proved to our team that you know, it's going to be the hard work and determination we have in game and in practice that's going to lead to us winning. And I think we showed that throughout the year. Next up was the state semifinals against Newburgh Free Academy. Again, conditions were tough and the opponent was tougher. These two teams had scrimmaged back in August, and Troy took it to NFA in that one. The goalbacks didn't forget that scrimmage. So first opportunity for Terry Anderson, who gives the ball right up the middle, and we are going to have Jaden Monroe to the house on the first play from scrimmage. I don't know if they were exactly as motivated to play as they, they probably should have been, um, there was a certain point in time in the game where I think they said, okay, well now it's, you know, it's getting down to nitty gritty, but I mean, that's, that's the way this team is. Again, Troy would need its seniors to step up if they wanted to keep playing. And on cue, they did. Ward reversed to Holmes. Good block by Casal to free it. Holmes in for the touchdown. Dev Holmes, 11-yard touchdown to put the Troy Flying Horses back on top. Troy rallied to win again, and it was back to the state title game. And it was the guys on the field who made the call that won that state semifinal game. We scored on a reverse to Dev, which was a call by the lineman. The lineman said, because you know they scouted our jet sweep really well, and the lineman said, Coach, if you go reverse, it's a touchdown. So Coach Grasso trusted in us and ran it and scored. And that was it. A team is only as strong as the players it's made of. And for Troy, there was one guy who put the team above himself going into his final season. I mean, if you look up a Troy football player in the dictionary, there's a picture of him. Matt Ashley was a starting cornerback on the 2016 Troy State Championship team. But before his senior season, the coaches came to him with a plan. Switch to linebacker. Now, Matt may have had his doubts about the idea at first, but he bought into his new role and became the emotional leader of the defense. I'm actually a great football player, honestly. Like his, that, that's like the definition of like hard over height. And like he's a great football player, honestly. What's he like as a teammate? Teammate, this is a goofy guy. Um, you know, he's real funny. But like, you know, he he um, he knows how to I really like pick guys up and you know gets on guys. You know, when like they're not doing what they're supposed to do. And he's just like a whole different type of guy on the football field. We had our last practice before the state championship game <clears throat> on the Saturday here up on the field. And at the end of the practice, Joe Casale and, and Matt sat on the 50 yard line and, and wouldn't leave because it's, it's not, I try to say it to my wife, Football is not what they do, it's who they are. I mean, I remember one practice, Coach Glusky, he was like, you know, people always told People always told me, you know, Goose, you were a phenomenal athlete, this and that. He was like, at the end of the day, when I die, I just want to be known as a guy that was an awesome person. You know, I don't want to be known as the guy that was a phenomenal athlete. I want to be known as a guy that was an awesome person. And ever since I heard that, it just uh, it really stuck with me. That's how I want to be. Just people remember me, remember me as an awesome person, someone that's always encouraged them, you know, to be as the best they could. That's just what all these coaches have pushed on us from day one, you know, be the best we could. If Ashley was the team's finesse, Dev Holmes was its flash. First down for the 42, Ward in motion, play action, quick hitter, Dev Holmes spins off his man, and Dev Holmes to the end zone. Dev Holmes, a senior wide receiver, is one of the most explosive players in this state. His offensive stats are spectacular, but the work he does in the classroom, that's even more impressive. He carries a 98 average and will attend Villanova University next year. My dad and my older brother and my mom always preached to me school comes first no matter what. So like when I was younger, if I did bad in, in a class, like in elementary school, middle school, they would make me miss a practice. And if I miss a practice, I would have to sit the game. So that I, I realized that when I was young. So and my older brother, he, he already says that has to be first because even if I go far with football, it has to stop one day, so you will always have to fall back and on. So I take pride in having uh, good grades and being a good student, because uh, student athlete, student comes first. Holmes is an intense competitor, like really intense, like hates to lose at anything he does, 
and that includes his schoolwork. Me and Joe Casale right now, we, we talk a lot of junk to each other in, in our calc class. Uh, I got a 99 right now, he has a 94. I uh, always tell him he's, he's dumb. Okay. <laughs> After the trash talk in calculus class is over, it's back towards working for a common goal. And for a team to be successful, everybody has to buy in, and that starts at the top. Coaches lead by example. They put in countless hours, but there comes a time when all that effort pays off. When you can coach a kid to do something, and then they go out on the field and they accomplish it, I mean, it makes you feel good and it makes them feel good, and, and it's just it's a bond that you're going to have with these guys forever. He's put in a lot of hours, like, for, like, his preparation for us for like games and stuff is just like it's unbelievable because he, he can just like prep for a team like that and we can just come out with a game plan and crush them like his game his preparation is it's just unbelievable he puts in a lot of hours for us. coach burns preparation led them to the final game of the year and a matchup with lancaster in the class double a state title game 235 remaining Ward, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. First down, Troy. And Ward still up. Ward with the clinching touchdown. It's back to back in double A. The flying horses of Troy from section two. Wire to wire, number one. And for the second year in a row, Troy is the double A state champs. Troy had done it. Perfect season, unbeaten in their last 26 games, and the first school to win back-to-back -back state titles in Class AA in New York State history. It's a feeling I always try to chase. It's one I remember back from 2016, and it's just, you know, you get a rush of everything that's gone into that time and moment, all the lifts, all the workouts, everything you've done up to that moment just comes out on you, and you really feel it, and you know, winning it, of course, with the guys you grew up with and, you know, kids who you may never play with again, it's something special that you have to cherish. You know, we'll go on to college and play, but it's kids we've just met. It's not the same as playing with kids you grow up in the same community with and doing it with the community you've been around so long behind your back. It's, there's no feeling like it. It's history. You can't, you can't take that away from us. So, and, um, as of right now, Coach Brands already says uh, we're the best group of seniors he has so far. It really showed how much hard work will pay off. It's such a it's such a cliche thing that everybody claims that they've worked hard, that you know they're always doing this and that, but at the end of the day we really put it all together and worked hard throughout the offseason for these past two years just day in and day out and it paid off. A football team is a family and if you spend as much time together as a team does you become more than just teammates. For Bob Burns, his football family his wife Estelle, children Abigail, Skyler, Brett, and Bryce. The end of the football season becomes a family keepsake forever. My Christmas card the last two years is a picture of me and my family on the, on the, the floor of the dome. So when it says, Merry Christmas from the state champs. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's a family thing, you know, it, it really is. Playing high school sports and being part of a team, you form a bond with classmates that will last a lifetime. And when it's over, and you've played your last game, it's not the touchdowns or the state titles that you'll remember most. The locker room. I'm gonna miss these guys. That, that was the one thing, that was the best time. The locker room and the bus rides. Because we, we knew what we were gonna expect on the field from each, each other. But the locker room, it, it was always something new happening in the locker room and on the bus ride. Always something new. So, always smiles in the locker room and the bus ride. So, that's what I'm gonna miss. It was truly a dream season for the Flying Horses, one that they will never forget, and these young men will carry these memories with them for the rest of their lives. For the NISPA Captain's Club, presented by the New York State Correctional Officers and Police Benevolent Association, I'm Chris Watson. We'll see you next time.